Good morning YouTube. So today we've got this Hyundai i30 and we're going to be doing a little bit of masking on it. So pretty straightforward. Um, I've actually already started some of the edge masking but yeah I just thought I might as well continue on the masking and make a video on it. So I was actually given this stuff by my local 3M rep. This is like a new case that they, they may be starting to get in so it's a made in canada one but it's not the 301 plus so um i actually tried it on another job and my expert opinion is that it's probably too sticky and it's nearly too good it's too strong and too sticky so i, I actually do love this stuff this is another one this is the amt automotive masking tape this is another one made in canada um and as it turned like we actually used to use all this stuff here in australia but then they got rid of the purple stuff for whatever reason um for yeah i mean it's, who knows why they got rid of it but they went back to the um the canadian it's probably something to do with, like exchange rates and all that you know how the world changes and that but um yeah so now we've gone back to this but what happened is like the first um the first batch of this going back to the old canadian stuff um first batch they it turns out I, I found out what happened but they they overheated it so that they must like heat treat it as um for like quarantine issues so to get it into australia they have to um treat it for like bugs or whatever and they overheated it so it wasn't sticking and it was breaking and then it was leaving residue like it was doing all the bad things that tape could do all the, all the things that cheap tapes do but it was a good tape so once we got through that first bad batch it's gone back to being great like one thing i actually do like about this is that it, it isn't too sticky to me it sticks where i want it to but not where i don't want it to so once i put a piece of plastic over the vehicle i don't want all that plastic to stick to it too hard if you know what i mean because then rip, pulling it off rips your plastic so actually i've got a bit ahead of myself i've got to do the masking on your your rear doors always mask your rear doors first so as i say like this stuff here it's really sticky and really strong like I did a bit of this yesterday and I'm like, wow, man, that is, that takes quite a bit of force to actually rip apart. So, um, I was thinking it might be one of those things more suited to winter. It's actually started warming up. It's, um, currently spring here in uh, Australia. So like yesterday when I used it, it was like a, um, I must, it must have been getting up to the thirties or at least high twenties. So all masking tapes do get a bit stickier in the warmer months that's it's not exclusive to that tape but um yeah this amt i like it I, this um this beige stuff i've always liked it even when i had my own workshop i did actually quite like using this masking tape make sure i always mask over fresh clean parts and paint work and all that it should be just fine. Gotta be careful with these joints. Sometimes you get like a bit of a build up of paint there. If you're not neat with it. So what have I got to talk about? Well, it's Tuesday morning and I'm masking this i30. So, not a great DLL. So I don't know, I just felt like making a video. Oh, that's right, videos, video settings and that. I just updated my camera like a couple of weeks ago. And the first video I did was a Volkswagen Tiguan. And I must have had the shutter speed as it turns out. There's actually one of the guys in the comments that mentioned it. And then when I was going through the settings, uh, I tried all the different, um, like the different resolutions and the different frame rates and that didn't really make any of a difference and then i remember what someone said there was actually a setting on the camera called shutter shutter speed or something like that and yep it sure enough i changed the shutter speed and there was a sweet spot so from now on all my videos on my main channel will be 4k they'll be recorded and rendered at 4k however i've decided gunman raw videos will be recorded at 4k but rendered at like 
um, I think it's 2K something, the, the next step down, just because um, well, I've actually just recently updated my video editing software too. And yeah, I'll just be rendering at a slightly lower resolution to save time because it, it takes a long time to render. Like last night I did a 20 minute video and it took probably two and a half hours to render it. And what that means is when you put the clips inside the video editor and the individual clips, you put them all into one file that you can upload to YouTube, that's, that's what rendering means for those who don't know. But yeah, I've actually been having heaps of fun on the editor again lately. The reason I'm using this stuff in the door jams is because it's two inch, so it bridges that, that gap a lot quicker. And here I always like to just go right up on that seam sealer line. And, and when you get to the bit that the seam sealer sort of gets wiped in, you just flick it over to a soft edge. It usually does the job. But yeah, I hope, I hope you guys can notice a, a good increase in the video quality. And on that note, um, there's a little gear icon when you're watching YouTube. I think it's down the bottom right. And click on that and then there's like, um, it'll say like HD or sometimes if you've got um, lower internets, it'll like automatically put you down to a lower resolution. And even sometimes if you've got good internet, it'll bump you down to a lower resolution. So if you do have like unlimited Wi-Fi where you are, like say if you're at home, um, yeah, just try upping the video quality. It, it does make a big difference, I've noticed anyway. So as long as you, your wife's not gonna yell at you for using up all the bandwidth. Yeah, Elon Musk looks like they're, they're gonna be releasing their Starlink constellation of satellites. Um, well, it's gonna be sort of live soon, which is pretty exciting. I was actually just this morning reading an article that um, it could go live this year, oh sorry, next year, their Starlink, which is like, ultra, if you don't know, it's like ultra high speed, fast internet through satellites. So yeah, Elon Musk obviously owns, te um, what's it called again, SpaceX. So pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to that if it eventuates here in Australia, but it's looking like it will. Many, there's been many naysayers when it comes to Elon Musk in the past. I'm a bit of a fanboy of his, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so as I say, that's why you have to do your rear door first so that that's set into place and you can mask all these edges. Yeah, I'm just at the point where like, I don't know, for whatever reason, having a bit of a break over from YouTube, that is having a bit of a break from YouTube um, over, over the cooler months of winter. It sort of made me come back when it's when spring comes in and a bit more invigorated, reinvigorated and I don't know, want to make videos again. It kind of got to the point where it's like a bit of a chore and I'm like, uh, got to make a video again. So that's why I kind of stopped. I'm like, no, nah, don't feel like it. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, as I say, with this stuff, it's, um, it's easier to break, which I mean, sometimes you need to break masking tape. So as I say, that's why I actually prefer this than the yellow stuff. Like, as I say, the yellow stuff is nearly too good. It, it is, it's too good. Yeah, these are all the kind of things that like, there was a while, like for a while in my trade, I used to get all fancy about all this kind of masking, but now I've found you do something like that and you just peel it off the edge a bit and you just don't load the paint up over there and it's just fine. Yeah, I used to do like false edges and I don't know, it just gets a bit time consuming for, for very little if any 
improvement in the finish. Okay, so nearly right to shut that door. See all these kind of things, I'll, I'll go around with the touch up brush, there's a few on the blend areas. I'll touch them up before I put any clear over the top. I decided to do a masking video here, I haven't done one for a while. This is sort of one of the things that I like doing these days. Sometimes you can get like paint coming through there onto the inside and then coming back out and you'll end up with overspray all over there. So, this is one thing that I've been doing for a while now, actually. It's one I just came up with myself, and it definitely does make a big difference, i found, anyway. Just the sort of surrounding edges. Nobody likes overspray on their cars. But yeah, I've been feeling a lot better now that I've um, eased up on the coffee. I've actually found that I've got like more energy, more sustained energy throughout the day and I'm getting much, much better sleeps as well. So like I got this um, espresso machine at home and man, that thing is, it's like, uh, it's like C-R-A-C-K. <laughs> that on YouTube I'll probably get in trouble you know you, you gotta be so politically correct these days but yeah I used to have like two double shots every single day but I've cut it right down just to one single shot in the morning and um, yeah made a big difference for me anyway it was my last drug. It is my last drug. But there was like one day, um, it was like Tuesday a couple of weeks ago, I actually, I didn't even have any. So I, I was gonna go full cold turkey and like give it up completely. Um, but yeah, it felt like, no shit, my head was in a vice all day. Like, I swear, <laughs> I was in physical pain all day from just from just getting off coffee, it's crazy. You don't realize how strong even like drugs like caffeine can be. Yeah, and with stuff like this, like some you see some people and they'll like do like a little blend down here and it's like, man, what are you saving, really? You're just being lazy. You're really not saving any time. <laughs> you just don't want to get down on your knees and and scuff and mask that seal panel too. You? you know, you don't have to go the whole way down, just sort of like clean it up and then back mask it down there. That's all you need to do.
Yeah, I hope, hope you're all doing all right out there in the world of crazy 2020. But um, I've been so lucky to be in the state that I live in, in Perth, because we barely even had any lockdowns. We smashed that virus and it's gone. I mean, we've locked our borders, we smashed the virus, locked the borders. They ended up getting some really good um, quarantine measures in place. And yeah, it's literally life as normal over here. You would not know, if you drove out there on the streets, you would not know that, yeah, anything's changed. I mean, it's one of those things that like, there's some tourism industries and anything like that that's obviously been hit a little bit, but as far as most of us go, like, you, you really wouldn't even know. But yeah, there are some places out there, like Sweden, like, they, they didn't really do anything. And they seem to be doing just fine. So, I don't know, have to wonder sometimes what's going on out there. Um, is there ulterior motives behind some of these, you know? lockdowns and you look at that woman from Ballarat all she did was like try to create a protest and she's getting locked up she's like a, a, a pregnant mum you know getting locked up yeah unfortunately we don't have any freedom of speech here in Australia Even in the UK, I think there was some guy who was like a doctor and everything, and he was speaking in one of the the gardens and got like locked up for just talking. <laughs> That's a bit bit loose, isn't it? Yeah, well, what do you do, man? Whoa. So I found one, two, three, and a and a sort of half, usually gets me over a car, three full arm lengths and a half. But yeah, with this new camera, I swear, like, I probably should have got one a while ago, but um, it's so much better, like, the battery life, the... It's actually easier to edit, and I actually did, in fact, update my editing software too, I think I mentioned that earlier. But yeah, that's... it's made a big difference, to be honest. So a lot of the issues that I used to have with 4K are gone. It's actually... it doesn't overheat the camera. Um, the file size is a bit bigger, but I've got big hard drives and honestly, storage is really not that expensive anymore. You get like a four terabyte um, mechanical hard drive for like um, less than 200 bucks, easily less than 200 Aussies. So in the States, I'm sure it's like just like around a hundred dollars really. But there we go. Cut it out. I love these Colad blades, man. So good. It's always good when you um, grab a new one. Like the last one, I actually dropped it down the floor there. But I must have had that last one going for like two months, you know. Always when you grab a new one, it's so nice. I don't know, I'm one of those guys that always makes things. So I get, get the, the most value out of everything. Like, we were never rich. I never would have classed our family as rich when I grew up. So I guess what that does teach you is the, um, the value of a dollar. Not to waste stuff. Um, I was actually pretty close to my grandpa too and he grew up in the, he was born in 1930 so he grew up in the 30s um, during the Great Depression so he's passed a lot of his uh, his ways down to me I guess he did pass a lot of his um, his morals and stuff like that about wasting stuff you know I think a lot of people these days just take a lot of things for granted But yeah, it's actually really, really good tape. But as a, and it's better, 
it's actually better on this because this is the morning as of recording this video and it's not quite as warm yet so one of those things i could actually see myself and, and he said that they will be getting this masking tape in um in 36 mil which is the size I, I prefer i mean two inches great this is a full two inch this thing is like 48 mil it's great but um it just works out a fair bit more expensive per roll that's why i usually try to avoid it and i don't know 36 mil it's all you need you don't you don't need the 48 it's a bit overkill really don't really need the two inch but yeah i was about to say like i could actually say myself using this stuff in winter and the um and the beige stuff in in summer it's really nice and sticky <laughs> let us know your thoughts on that I, I i don't usually talk too much about masking tape in my other vids so let us know your thoughts on the masking tape so these are both the canadian made Gunny just rambling on about masking tape. Well, I am masking a car, so give us a break. Yellow looks cool too. I like the yellow colour. It was always my favourite colour when I was a kid. But I'll never own a yellow car again. I think it was like my second or third car I had. It's like a little yellow Sigma. And the bees are just attracted to it big time. You'd be, go to jump in your car and in, in the wrong time, like spring and that, and they would just be covered in bees. Because, yeah, I guess they, they think it's a flower. It's anything yellow, they, they're attracted to, aren't they? My favourite colour on cars is probably red. Um, but I've actually noticed recently, one, one thing I've sort of been thinking about is that I reckon red suits small cars. It suits certain cars. So I've got a little 75 Tirana, and that's I sprayed that in Sting Red, which is like a solid color red, like a nice bright solid red. So the Tirana is a pretty small little four-door sedan, and um, I reckon it looks great in that red. I've got a little Corolla out there. That looks great in red. However, if you go for the bigger cars, like Mercedes, like the big Mercedes and big saloon sedans, they look terrible, I think, anyway. I reckon they look terrible in red. I guess I was looking on car sales recently and I saw this, I think it was like a C200. Yeah, it was just a C200 Benz in red and I'm like, oh, good luck selling that, man. It looks terrible. But um, like the, I reckon those C200s look really good in black and white and silver for whatever reason. It's just certain, certain size cars and certain style cars certain colors suit I guess like um, on the other hand it, it, it's not like the make because we we did this little um, C180 Benz a little um, two-door I think there was it a coupe I think it was anyway yeah um, and yeah that, that, that look great so it's not that it's a Mercedes that it looked bad in red it's just I guess the size of the car and the, the shape of the car yeah, getting rambling on about colours now. I'm not going to be, hide, be able to hide much anymore now I'm recording in 4K. You're going to see all the imperfections in my work and oh, everyone's going to stop subscribing. Just kidding, mate. Yeah, I was actually recently offered a um, a paid review, and I knocked it back. So I've, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, uh, I replied to him saying, you know, I don't like the idea of this because it could sway my opinion. And I haven't heard back from him since. I'm thinking, wow, I, I still would have done the review. I just didn't want to do it on your terms, and now they won't even reply to me. Oh well, maybe I did the wrong thing. Maybe I should have just taken the money. I know most people would have, but out of integrity man you know it's just one of those things i like my opinion to be untainted and like solely my opinion you know and as i say i reckon most people would have taken the money but um no it didn't feel right i've never done it before and it just didn't feel right so my loyalty when it comes to products um lies with you guys it honestly does you know i've, I've got nothing i don't see that i've got anything to gain by lying to 
the people who make me who I am, you know? Like, I know it's the old cliche saying, but I'm nothing without you. Like, if, if everyone stops watching and, and thinks that I'm a sellout, well then, I'm nothing. I'm nothing more than, you know, a guy with two subscribers who doesn't get any views. So, not selling out yet, mate. That's about it. I'm gonna have to put some foam tape in that door handle. But that's probably about it for this vid there, Gunners. Hope you've uh, enjoyed sitting down and watching me doing a bit of masking. I know some people really do enjoy it. Some people enjoy just listening to me talk crap. I'm gonna tighten this up, because when, when we do the blowing with the air blower, this stuff can go flapping around. That's why I always like to tape, tape it to the floor. Also, it can help stop a little bit of overspray getting in the undercarriage of the vehicles. Um, but I reckon that's about us, nearly. I don't think I'll bother doing a spraying video on this one. Maybe. I don't know. See how I feel when the time comes. I might, actually. I've got a new spray gun. We'll start off by giving it a wipe down with some water cleaner. Job like this, man, I didn't even use prep sole on it. I find you don't have to. As long as the panels are nice and clean, as long as there's no wax or grease on it, it's all you actually really need. Go flick that booth on. And this is how you do it. There we go. That's the booth on. It used to be so loud in here, man. I forgot about that, actually. Since I was doing videos last, I got him to fix the, um, the, there was like a bearing in the fan and it was, it was toast, man. It was like whirring and whirring off its head. Like, it got to the point, it was so bloody loud, man. I used to have to wear earplugs and earmuffs in the workshop all day. And I finally got the boss to fix it, and yeah, life's, I don't even wear any earplugs anymore. Life's a lot better without that bloody loud booth. But, um... Yeah, it also got to the point where like people were always complaining, like, man, I can't even hear you. And it, it wasn't that I wasn't yelling, because I was. I was literally screaming my lungs out, doing these raw vids, trying to talk you through the paintwork. Um, but people are still like, man, I can't hear you over the buddy spray booth. So I gave up for a while. That was actually a big part of the reason why I gave up because I had enough of um, all the comments and people were like, man, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. It's too loud. So, yeah. Hopefully, you can hear me now and I'm not even yelling, I'm just talking normally. No, let's do the paintwork. We come this far. May as well finish the job off. This is actually the easy part. The paintwork takes less time than all the prep and all the masking and that. So I actually haven't even mixed the colour up. So I'm going to have to go and mix the colour up now. I do actually like to use the water cleaner before I go and get my spray suit on because sometimes you get left with little bits of that water cleaner in the in the gaps. And if you're not careful, it can start dripping out after you put your paint down and that can make yeah, a bit of a mess out of your paintwork. Alan found that one out the hard way. I found that out the hard way. So most, most of the mistakes I've made, I've learned from, you know, I guess it's one of those things. That's the only reason I'm a half decent painter is because I've learned from my mistakes, you know. Not to say I haven't made them. We all have. Anyway. I'll go out and mix up some colour there, guys. Rightio, let's get back to it there, Gunners. So I've got the paint mixed up. 
and just got to put these bits of foam tape in those door handle openings. That should be enough. still kind of see that, that blend. I just, yeah, a little tea. Oh, it's not even spraying properly. Must have been a little bit of um, paint built up there. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> Uneven build up on the cap. Usually there's like the tiniest little bit of something caught up in there. See how that went. Hey, I made it work. I made it work, but yeah, not ideal. One of the holes might be clogged. See how we go now. I can't see any imperfection in that fan. That's fine now. Yeah, it is. Huh. Oh well. You get that sometimes. I think that blend looks all right now. Before it sort of, it stood out a bit to me. All right, we'll, um, 
we'll get the air blower. I hope you guys were able to hear what I was saying then, but if not, maybe I maybe I can try yelling a bit louder next time. So yeah, what I was saying before about this gun here, they're very limited numbers. I believe there's only 15 of them. And um and they are available now, but I don't even think they're listed yet. They're not actually listed on Spray Guns Direct website. So if you do want one, go and send Chris an email, info at Spray Guns Direct. I will, I will put that email address in the description of the video. Give him an email and tell him that I sent you and that you want one of those. But be warned, it's a pro, not a pro light. They may not have noticed that. This is a pro, not a pro light. So I got it in one T110. As I say, it must have been slightly clogged up. I didn't, I must have left a little bit because I used it for clear last night. There must have been a tiny little bit of clear left over there somewhere. I'm gonna use it again for clear on this job. But um, I found that that T110, that's a great air cap for, um, for clear coat for getting really flat finishes. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I was saying as I was spraying this, I was saying, yeah, it's, it's, it's really not putting it out nicely, you know? I was blaming the air cap, but it turns out it, it actually wasn't even spraying properly. You can tell, by the way, it's unevenly building up on that air horn there. But, um, yeah, I love this air blower too. This, it sucks in air. If you look at that, that's, that sucks in air from the spray booth. So it blows a higher volume of air over the panel than any of the normal little duckbill air blowers blow. Hey, that blend looks pretty good now. I'm pretty happy with that. It's dried down nicely. Actually a pretty nice blow, this one. Not as nice as that one, man. <laughs> I tell you what, I really didn't like the colour on this. I was, I was like, oh, it's, it's too much when I first saw it, but I love it now. P110, baby. Okay, so I gave that a good, good five minutes in between coats. 
And even on that first cone, look at how tight that finishes. It's very tight. So that's the kind of finish that um, you actually get on most Japanese vehicles. So you see even now, I'm, I'm going a little bit below two bar. I found you don't quite need the two bar with this gun. I actually fight this setup, I, I find it quite efficient too. Looking good. Just gotta be careful where your overlap is that you don't overdo it. So we don't overdo, don't build up the paint too much. Come back and do this edge because I missed it. And there we go. Now only a couple of drops left, man. <laughs> that looks killer. That was actually a really big repair and it came up quite nice. I blocked it all down last night. Really nice and clean. And as I say there, guys, if you want one of these guns, check out the link in the description. I'll send Chris an email. Info at raygunsdirect.com or gotco.uk I think it is actually. So let's have a quick look over this job and then that's going to be up there guys. Really, really nice flat finish there. I'll give that 5 or 10 minutes and then we'll hit base. Came up real good. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested. All that aside I'd just like to say a big thanks for watching and that is enough to support the channel but as I say if you'd like to go the next step then be sure to check out some of that merchandise. Thanks for watching and until next time get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.